and it's about 11 inch thick wall and it's really tall um, and I don't know how far we're going to get this week but I guess basically this whole thing is going to get filled in with, with the lead straw clay eventually. Um, reasons to use this technique. It's, it's a, a, a relatively good insulation. It's comparable per inch of thickness to straw bale for insulation. So you're getting maybe at least R1.5, maybe up to R2 per <laughs> inch of thickness. So this wall is going to be R20 or so, which is pretty good. Um, way, way better than you'd get from a top wall or a stone wall or a earth bag wall or a grand earth wall. But you can also make the wall whatever thickness or thinness you want. This is a quite thick one, but you could, you know, you could do a lead shot clay wall that's just a two by four thick or a two by six thick or a two by eight thick. Um, so if you don't want the wall thickness that you get stuck with when you're doing straw bale, but you still want a relatively good insulation, this is a good compromise. This technique also is a really good technique for retrofitting existing um, stud frame structures. You can have an old stud frame structure that, you know, is in poor condition, you know, the sheetrock's all messed up and the insulation's all been eaten out by mice or whatever, and you can tear all that stuff back to the frame and then stuff it with light straw clay and plaster over it and get yourself essentially a, a breathable natural wall system and uh, a retrofit or remodel. Those are some of the things I like about it. <laughs> You can basically stop, so we've got this material that we've made by taking loose straw and tossing it in clay slip. And the analogy is that it's like dressing a salad. It's only a little bit of, of, of clay slip. You can see that the straw is pretty much all dirty, but it's not wet. There's no, you know, there's no way you could wring any moisture out of here. Um, it should be just sticky enough that if you, you know, kind of squeeze it, it should more or less hold itself together. And we want to keep it from drying out before it goes into the wall or it won't be sticky at all anymore. Um, the simplest mixing technology that I know of is what we were doing here, which is just a few people tossing it with their hands and somebody pouring the slip on. Um, and it goes relatively quickly that way. There are people who have built mechanized straw clay mixers. Uh, um, the Art of Natural Building, I think there's a little uh, blurb about a uh, mechanized straw clay mixer that a guy built out of a length of culvert. So the whole culvert spins and it's at a slight angle and it's got spikes welded on the inside of it. And you throw the straw and the slip in the top and then as it sort of, the spikes pick it up and, it's, and it mixes and drops and mixes and drops and works its way down to the bottom of the culvert. And by the time it spills out, it's mixed. Um, I've never used one of those. This technique works pretty well. So, another thing compared to straw bale that's good about this technique is that it's very easy to do framing of any kind of windows or doors or anything like that. Like let's say we were doing this wall here. It can, it can be hard to get a whole lot of little tiny bales. You know, you need to make a whole lot of little tiny bales and then stack them up on top of each other. It can be hard to do that in a way that's really strong and they hold together well. But it's very easy to pack light straw clay into any size width of cavity, unless it gets too tiny. If it gets really, really tiny, it's hard to get in there and, and get things tamped. Um, I really like this framing technique, where instead of having a stud, we could have framed this whole thing with 2 by 12s but then we would have the stud go all the way through the thickness of the wall, 
and back to what I was talking about conventional buildings with sheetrock, every time you have that, you compromise your insulation. So with this system, the straw clay material is going to go in between the studs, and except for here, you won't have that, that, um, that loss of insulation anywhere. Also, it uses a lot less wood. And these could even probably be two by threes instead of two by fours. Um, the furthest apart you want them is about three feet. These are the, about two and a half feet. They could have been just a little bit further apart. Now that this is here, that one really is, you know, we could have, we could have gotten rid of that. I think it, not worth it at this point. We still Probably can. Do you think out. it's worth it? Do you think it's worth getting rid of it? to support that, though. Yeah. But anyway, I don't know. This That distance would be about the max that you'd want to go. The good thing that this will do, um, staying here, is it will <laughs> create something to lock the straw clay into. The problem if you're doing a standard stud frame so imagine you've got this, and then there was another one of those over here, and you're filling in the gap between them with light straw clay. After it's all full and the forms come off, if somebody were to curl themselves against the wall, there's nothing but a little bit of friction holding the straw clay into the, into the studs there. Whereas in this system, it's totally woven through here and it can't shift. So there are some tricks that you can use uh, um, if you are going up against a stud like this. One of them would be to take some strips of wood, like two by twos or something, and attach them to the inside and outside surfaces so that the straw clay kind of keys in between something else that's gonna catch it. Another system which is really common is to have horizontal sticks that you drop in as you go up. And at some point I'll do a demonstration. Maybe when we're at the river today we can try to find a, a little bit of willow. Or got a whole bunch like of willows cut after here. we had that phone conversation. You got some? Yeah. Oh, this okay. has got plenty of willow right here. It needs to be straight. Oh. So that can be challenging. But anyway, I don't need it right now, Jim, but you grab a big clump of the stuff, place it in there so that it's, you know, maybe three or four inches thick. And again, like with Cobb, the bigger a chunk you can get in at one time, the better. There's no point grabbing it like that and sticking it in. Just grab. <laughs> the biggest piece you can get and kind of shove it into the corners a little bit. Thank you. And then being aware and careful of the fact that there are some all thread rods sticking out of the foundation, the best way to start the tamping, particularly with a wide wall like this, is to get your foot in there and stomp it down. And then, take a tamper, and mainly what I'm doing with the tamper is just working around the edges. So that, what I just did, that's sufficient tamping. Um, and we can get probably three people 